Hey, it's Alan Watts RC and this is my Flash Powder Factory Guide, which is currently the fastest way to train agility in RuneScape. Okay, so let's talk about the requirements. So in order to play Flash Powder Factory, you will need to have at least level 75 agility, 75 thieving, and 50 herblore. And for the item, there are no required items. However, if you have factory boots, um, which are obtained playing this minigame, um, bring them because they will be quite useful. But except that, you don't need anything. Flash Powder Factory is located inside the rock stand, and the fastest way to get there is to use the Tavali Teleport and then go to the Southeast House. There, there will be a little trap. You need to click on it to go underground, where you will be able to start a minigame. Um, I highly recommend you to go to a foreign server because you want to be alone when training um, agility that way. You will see why later in the video, but the less people they are um, playing with you, the more experience you will be able to get. Okay, so what do you do exactly inside Flash Powder Factory? Well, the goal is kind of simple. You want to create powder. And to do that, you will need to gather ingredient A, then ingredient B, then you want to go to a mixer, mix the two, and you will get points that will be later transferred into experience. When you will start a minigame, you will be teleported to a place with a lot of smaller rooms. So this can seem a little bit complex. It's even a simplified version where I remove um, naturally used rooms. But anyway, um, there are two main types of um, path. The first type is the blue path. I will call it the blue ring. Um, so this is the outside path. And what's great about them is that you can always move from a room to the other following this path. So it's never blocked. Every round, an ingredient A will spawn randomly in one of those four spots, north, south, east, or west, and you will need to get there to get the ingredients. There's also another type of doors or pattern or rings, whatever you want to call it, inside this um, blue ring, which I will call the yellow pattern. So this is where the ingredient B will spawn, um, but there's a little trick with them. Sometimes the path will be blocked. So as you can see, there are at least two ways to get to B, so you might need to go to the other one. After collecting the two ingredients, what you want to do is to go to one of the four mixer. And unlike the ingredients, the mixer are always there. So there are always four mixer at the same time. And after using your ingredients on the mixer, you will receive points and the ingredients A and B will respawn at another spot and you want to collect them once again. Actually, you want to repeat until you run out of cataclysms. So at the beginning of the game, you have six of them. So long story short, you want to collect the ingredients A and B six times, go to the mixer six times, and it will be the end of the game. Finally, there's a last type of doors, and I will call them the white inner ring. And those are very useful, probably the most useful ones, because they connect the B rooms together. And they are useful to travel a lot of distance very fast. However, you need to keep in mind that those doors can also be blocked and really screw you up if you don't pay attention. So when a door is blocked, what you can do is to use a button. So next to each door, there is a button that if you press it, will open the door. So that's really convenient. Um, but however, by doing that, it will also shut down one other door. Um, so you really need to think about that. So let's say to the top right picture, I want to go to get the ingredients B. So I press the button, I go get the ingredients B, but the white door that was opened before is now shut. So I'm forced to go back to the other ring. So there is a lot of different combination. Uh, I won't really cover them all inside this video, but the most commonly one used is if you want to use a button to go inside B and you want to use a white door after that, um, the two white doors needs to be open. So one of them will be shut down and the other one will still be alive. Another thing to take into consideration is that after pressing a button, it will turn red. Actually, all the buttons in this area will turn red. So the two ones to go inside B and the four ones um, inside B. And when a button is red, it won't be usable for about 23 seconds. Obviously, your goal with this minigame is to maximize the amount of experience you will get at the end, which is kind of maximizing the points. However, um, the scoring system in this minigame is kind of tricky. 
So it has diminishing returns. So what it means is that if you get two times more points in a game, you won't get two times more experience, only about 25% more experience. So your goal to maximize the experience is to finish the games as fast as possible. However, there's a little trick. You cannot simply quit anytime you want. You will get a time penalty, which can be up to halving your experience. So this is a very big time penalty. However, if you are forced to quit because you have used your last cataclysm, then you won't get the penalty most of the time. So yeah, I'm saying most of the time because currently the minigame is glitch and sometimes you get the penalty even if you're not supposed to. Um, but there's nothing much we can do about it. Because of the nature of the scoring system, so with diminishing returns, there are a lot of stuff um, that even if they give bonus points, it's not really worth the time and experience. Um, so for example, you can use charge that will boost the amount of points, but at the end using a charge will only give approximately 50 experience. You can also pickpocket other players, approximately 100 experience for the wall game. And there is also the outfit that gives a lot of random bonus, but you don't really care about them except the boots. That's why at the beginning I recommend to have the boots, because you will fail less often doing the obstacle. But that's the only outfit that's worth it. There is also rumble, um, but they're just pointless. Okay, so now I'm going to talk more about advanced stuff, so stuff for players who have already played the minigame before. Um, so there are two main categories of obstacles. There are the ones found in the blue ring, and there are the ones found in the yellow or white ring. And there are two of them that will be fast, so those are the ones you want to maximize. So if you have the choice, you want to use a fast obstacle that you will be able to travel faster rather than a bad or slow obstacle. Okay, so those two maps represent all the different combinations, the common one that you can face when playing Flash Butter Factory. So if you want to go from A to B or to B to the mixer or the mixer to A, or if you want to move from the west part to the east part, the north part to the south part. So the path you want to do is the one highlighted in green. It will be a faster one than the red one because of the obstacle it contains. Obviously this doesn't take into consideration if the doors are um, opened or not or if you're running or not. So yeah, this is only to give you a rough idea of what to do when you have the choice. Um, so when playing, there are three main rules that if you follow them, you should get pretty decent experience. First of all, and the most important one, you want to always use the shortest path. So the path with the least amount of obstacle, except if you will get stuck if you follow it blindly. So this is very important. There is no real trick to it. I cannot really teach you that. Um, you will find it out by playing yourself. It's not really that hard to find it. Um, but most of the time you will need to use orange and white doors a lot. Now if there are two paths that has the same amount of obstacle, the path you want to use is the one with the most open doors. So if you need to press a button to open the door, first of all you lose time and second of all there is a chance you will get stuck after that. Now if two path has the same amount of obstacle, same amount of open door, we want to use a path with the best obstacle. So by using the two maps I've showed you before. Another useful thing to know is that is that by pressing the map button next to your minimap, you will be able to see where the A and B location will be for the next round. And this can be useful when you want to choose which mixer to go. But I will cover that more in the demo. Finally, if you want to quit a game, you can simply drop any item in your inventory and if you want to restart a game, you can go to the lobby and log back in. It will start a new game automatically. Okay, so in order to start a game, you want to talk with Brian in the rock stand after entering from the Tavoli trapdoor. So when you will be teleported to the factory, and you will start off in one of the corner, and there will be a lot of rooms. And there are two arrows in your minimap. One of them is blue for ingredient A, and one of them is yellow for ingredient B. So first of all, I will go get the ingredient B and then get the ingredient A. But the order is not really important, especially in a case uh, like that. So we'll simply come back and then go north to get ingredient A. When I will have both of them, um, four red arrows will appear in my minimap. Those are the mixer. I will need to go to one of them to get my points. Um, 
So as you can see by using the minimap, I can see that the bee will spawn south. So I could go to the mixer north, it will take approximately the same amount of time, but what I will do is go south because it will be faster. And overall doing this move will save me one obstacle for the next round. Um, this time it was useful to check the minimap, most of the time it's not really that useful, you won't always save an obstacle or sometimes and even sometimes depending on the doors you can actually get stuck and stuff like that. But it's a useful thing to know. Right now I want to go northwest, but as you can see the doors are blocked. So what I will do, I will use the button, as you can see all the buttons turn red now. But it opened the door, so I'm kind of happy. I will once again use a button to open the, the southwest door in order to go to ingredient A. So once again, I will need to choose between um, mixer to the north or the south. I will once again go to the south. If you remember correctly, the minimap I showed like a while ago, um, it's better in this part of the map to go south to the mixer because of the different obstacles. Okay, so I got it once again. As you can see, at the southeast, the doors are blocked. And this is a very important stuff. If I try to do exactly the same thing I've done before, I will get stuck because I will want to use a button, go to B, and then from B, use a white door to go to um, the other B. And I cannot do that, I would get stuck. So what I did is get, I, get, uh, I got A first, and then I will go get it's kind of hard to actually figure this all out if you're new to game game, uh, but don't worry, you will get used to it pretty fast. Um, so right there, I could go to the, the east part or the west part. I chose the west part because it has faster um, obstacles. So right there, I will go to um, A first. Now, once again, I could go to the east and then um, go to the B, but I will go to... Um, west and then northeast because it has better agility course and another thing is that the door was already open now we'll click um, b and i will go to northeast because the door is already opened and finally i will go to this mixer okay so now i'll simply collect a it's pretty straightforward so it gets pretty repetitive after a while but if you really want to maximize um you really need to think a lot and then I will go and get me so right there I got an option I could go left or right I chose um, to the east because it has better agility course and this one is also very good um, so I will go there I will then go to west because it has better agility course and the door is already opened and I will use the mixer then I will simply go back to B and then A um, so yeah, right there I got the option, I will go southeast because this agility course obstacle is better. Now this is the very last time that I'm going to use a mixer because as you can see in my inventory, I only have one cataclysm left. And by using it, I will be teleported outside of the game. So it will be the end of the game. So what you can do in order to restart the game is to go to the lobby. And this is what I will do. Um, for some reason, if I press yes and go to the lobby at the same time, so I get the penalty less often, but it's not really proven fact. But maybe it's just superstition, I guess. Um, so after logging back, you will receive your Brian points. So for example, this game, I got 137 points. Okay, and finally, let's talk about the rewards. So after completing a game, you will get Brian plants that can be transferred into experience or outfit pieces. So right now, I'm assuming that you can complete a game in eight, in eight minutes, which is possible if you always use the shortest path. Better time is also possible if you always use the good obstacles and if you use the path with the least amount of buttons to press. I'm also assuming that you get the time penalty glitch once per hour. So overall, you should receive 959 points per hour, which is the equivalent of 91k experience in agility. You can also choose to use it for TV experience, but it's not really recommended. 
You can also get factory outfit, and you can get the boots. Those are the ones that I would highly recommend you to get first. They will reduce the chance of failing a agility course inside um, the mini game, so you get faster points. Um, you can also get the trouser. Um, it will boost the amount of cataclysm you will get at the beginning of the game. It's really a bad outfit to have. Don't wear it. You will get less points per hour. There is also the mass, which increase the chance of finding stuff in rubble. I haven't covered them in this video because they are kind of useless. Anyway, you can also get the top that will boost by two minutes the amount of time you can be in the game, which is totally useless. And finally, the gloves increase the chance of pickpocketing another player. I didn't cover this in this video because it's not really that important experience-wise. Finally, the most important part um, of those outfits is that if you have three of those outfits when training Herblore, you will have 10% chance of making a 4-dose potion instead of a 3-dose. So that's very good. Um, you will get um, a lot more cash. We'll save a lot of cash doing that. And if you have the full outfit, you will get experience by making unfinished potion, the equivalent of cleaning the herb. So this can be good if it's your money-making method. So yeah, that's pretty much it about this video. I hope you liked it. And don't forget to click the annotation on the screen to go check out my last guide, which was a level 1 to 99 divination guide. I'm also hosting a little pool every single week where I ask you guys what guide I should make next. So this week, winner was obviously Fast Potter Factory. So if you want to vote, you can simply go to my website, rainingchain.com. The link will be in the description. So see ya!